This is the second video in a short crash course on understanding basic photo and image editing in any platform where we're using GIMP, but what we're looking at should carry over into Photoshop to understand how the computer thinks so you can master editing your photos more quickly. Uh, hopefully you have seen this RGB video so you know how the computer looks at pixels and light because that's our perspective in everything making all of our choices and decisions and settings much, much easier. You're using a computer, so you want to know how the computer thinks, and that's what, that's what this video, which I took 80 hours to create, explains very, very well. Please watch it if you haven't. So we've seen this video. Now let's start editing some photos and, and look at how a photo editor, like GIMP or Photoshop, sees the, the colors in, in an image. It looks at them mathematically. Now, this is Cape Manzamo, which is on the, the, the west side of Okinawa. These are my pictures. No, I didn't steal them. Now, the first thing I'm going to do while I'm editing is, is I've, I've got layers over here. So we've got, we've got multiple pictures stacked up on top of each other. Layers, very important, easy to understand, but you've you got to get the concept. First thing I'm going to do is duplicate it. Uh, I can click the duplicate button or I can just press the hot key, control shift D. There we go. Now I'm going to edit this one, but I've still got my original here if I make a mistake or I need it. So we're going to go to, um, well, rather than going to colors, let's look at our mode. We're going to come up here and look at this in just a moment. But first, understand how this layer interacts with this layer. Right now, it's in normal mode, which means that this is a copy of our image sitting on top of our original image. So it's hiding the image below. It's very simple and straightforward. There's not much to understand. But if we changed our mode to something like, say, multiply, it would get really strange looking. Now, why would it say multiply? Ironically, I've got a, a, a carrier <laughs> flying over my house right now. Okinawa also has this. I'm in Taiwan. Okay, so if if why is multiply a layer mode here? Why? Because the computer looks at the colors as numbers. So it's going to multiply the color numbers. So if I click multiply, it's going to get much more dramatic. The, the lights are lighter and the darks are darker. And, and so we end up with this. Now, I could change this to something else like screen. Okay, so it, 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 that's another, it's, it's a math equation. And, and the purpose of this video is not to get into what all of these would be doing and what they mean. You could study it in depth. But that, look, that's a really beautiful effect. Like, you know, that, that might be the perfect poster that you want someplace. And we got that by changing the layer mode. Um, so uh, burn, ooh, that's that's much more dramatic. Y you've got to play with it. There's a lot of trial and error. Even if you know the theory of how it worked, you just have to become familiar with this. Now, another thing we can do, multiply is a classic. But another thing we can do is adjust the opacity, which means that, you know, if it's 100%, then the picture is fully here. But we can make it somewhat transparent by turning down the opacity and then the effect of our multiply uh, layer here will, will kind of somewhat be toned down. Now, let's say that I, I, I did this and I like this at, at this opacity level. I don't want it too much, so I turn down the opacity. I like it, so I want to make it into one single photo before I continue. Let's say that I want to do that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do merge down. And now I've kept it as it is, that's our new photo, and I would edit it from here. But I don't want to do that. And in fact, working with layers in different layer modes is not the purpose of this video. I'm just going to leave it in normal mode for the rest of this video. And I'm going to show you other things we can do to edit this, this photo by looking at colors. First, top of the list, color balance. So we're going to open up our color balance dialog and you might recognize something here. We've got red, green, blue on this side, yellow, magenta, cyan on the other. Red is opposite of cyan. Same with green and magenta and blue and yellow. Why is that? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. Remember in our first video, we looked at red, green, and blue and how we mix different colors. Think, think flashlights as real colors of the real rainbow. Adding them together, mixing them, we get pure white because we're working with light. We're not working with stained glass windows like we use in printer ink, so to speak. So green is the opposite of magenta because we get magenta from the rainbow, from light, from your computer screen by mixing pure red with pure blue. That's why magenta and green are opposite. Same with cyan and red. Green and blue mix to make cyan, which makes opposite of red. Same with yellow, mixed from green and red to make blue. Now, we're not dealing with paint, we're dealing with light. So we add enough of it, we end up with pure white. So that's why red and cyan are opposite and blue and yellow are opposite. We look over here, red and cyan are opposite. So I can do more in the cyan direction or I can do more in the red direction. And that, that's something that's just fun to play with. Reset is one of my favorite buttons. If only life had one. You can play with this to get an idea for how the, the computer thinks about the different colors. And same thing with yellow and with blue. Okay. Now here's a little editing trick I learned long ago when I first started playing with this. I love the blue color of this ocean. I, I just, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal color. But I want it to stand out more. So how do I bring out that blue? I'm not going to turn up the blue. I'm going to turn down the blue just a little bit. Right about there, I guess. Oh, that's too much. That's too much yellow. That's beautiful. By turning down the blue, I'm celebrating the blue that's already there. There's kind of a lesson in life about that or a hardship and so forth. All right, I'm, I'm going to leave it about 7.8 or whatever that is. That, that looks pretty good to me. It reminds me more of the colors on that actual day. So I'm going to click OK. Now over here in my layers, this is, this is the active layer we're on now. If I turn that off so we can't see it, this is what we started with. Look, there's some blue shades in those rocks there. And this is where we edited. Now I'm going to do more editing, so I'm going to duplicate this. So if I make a mistake or something, I can always go back. So now we're going to do something else here. We could look at color temperature. This is basically like color balance, but it's just warm and cool colors. It's just two simple settings if, if you're thinking in terms of art school. Largely doing the same thing, not quite as many knobs and switches. Hue chroma, it's another way to, to edit the colors. Uh, hue is where we are along the rainbow. Um, you can explore this on your own. We're not looking at that here. But we just looked at hue, hue and saturation. This has the setting that we want. Hue is, again, where our color is along the rainbow. Now, watch these colors here in the center. Reset. Here's our red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow. Those are our basic colors we're going to end up with in the photo. If I rotate it, look how those colors change. The, 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 the rainbow just spins right around those colors. So hue is about where we fall in terms of the rainbow. And you can have some fun effects and you, you can have a fun time changing stuff to make it look like it's from another planet or something. But that's not what we're looking at. We're trying to make this photograph look as real as it originally was without doing our own artwork. That's what we're doing here. So I want to make the greens look greener and the blues look bluer. And I do that with saturation. So I'm just going to turn up the saturation a little bit. I, I think maybe about 20 or 30 ought to do it because I've, I've done this enough. That's beautiful right there. Look at that. The, the, the colors are rich and that's, that's more what it looked like on that day. When we started, it looked kind of cloudy. Now, if I turned it up too much, everything gets kind of neon looking and, it, and maybe that would go good on a magazine or if you want to do some CD artwork or some, some, some you know, music cover, but that's not our purpose. We just want a great photograph that looks like it probably really did. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave that right there as that. And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to click OK. And now we've taken this Monzimo image and we, we started out with this and we ended up with this. And uh, we did that all based on our simple understanding of light using the simple color tools of color balance and hue saturation.